So we all know, all of us here, hopefully know, that the main heat producing components of a PC, the CPU and the GPU, have some slight differences between their mobile and desktop variations. You might buy a gaming notebook with an Intel Core i7-7700 and a GeForce GTX 1070 like the MSI GT73 here, but find that its performance doesn't quite match up to your desktop PC that's supposed to have the same components. While your friends will find that you're a lucky son of a gun to have a desktop and a gaming laptop with specs that good. But how big is the difference between mobile and desktop processors, and why do we see that disparity? That's, that's, what, that's what this video... Shit. That model had a Core i7-6820HK processor and a 4K screen. This model's a new one. It's got a KB Lake Core i7-7700HQ, a 1080p screen, and a GTX 1070, which is the same as the previous one. Now, to have something to compare this laptop against, I threw together this build with a stock Core i7-7700K and an MSI Twin Frozer 6 Gaming X GTX 1070, also using MSI Z270 Gaming M5 motherboard to keep everything MSI. Both systems also have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Now, of course, these two systems are not completely identical. The desktop RAM is clocked at a higher frequency than the laptop, their cooling setups are different, storage is different, but those are all differences you'd expect to see comparing a laptop to a desktop. For my testing, I wanted to get a general picture of the performance gap between the desktop and mobile versions of the same parts, the CPU and the GPU. Now I know you guys love benchmarks, and who doesn't? But before we get to those, I need to prime your brains to understand why we're going to see a difference in performance. Now, the main things distinguishing laptop processors from desktop processors are power draw and performance. This is because a notebook has to take all the parts that make up a computer and shrink them down into a confined space where heat can build up quickly. But in a desktop tower, you've got plenty of space for good airflow to moderate temperature, and you've got room for a big old internal power supply so you can get enough juice to pump it up. <laughs> The specs for these two CPUs illustrate that pretty clearly. While both processors have the same number of cores and threads, the Mobile 7700HQ has about half the thermal design power, or TDP, at 45 watts to the 7700K's 91 watts. Base and boost clock are also quite a bit lower, and it's also got two less megabytes of L3 cache. These changes allow the laptop part to tone down its performance enough that it doesn't overheat. Now, in the past, Intel has made the mobile version of a given CPU model have a different number of cores and threads than the desktop version sometimes, but with KB Lake, we don't really see a lot of that. For the most part, the specs that vary are the ones I listed earlier. Now, on the GPU side, we've got the same amount of transistors, GDDR5 memory, and pretty much the same memory bandwidth. What's different is the clock speeds. 1442 MHz base clock in the GT73 to 1607 MHz in the desktop GPU, although this Gaming X1070 is in OC mode, regular gaming mode base clock would be 1582 MHz. Now, supposedly to partially offset the loss in performance by the decrease in clock speed, the Mobile 1070 has 148 more CUDA cores, also known as unified shaders. Presumably, having more cores running at a lower clock speed can moderate temperature a little bit. We also see eight more TMUs, or texture mapping units. So, now we know what we're working with, let's look at some benchmarks. Let's start with the classic, Cinebench R15. We see a 26% increase from the 7700HQ to the 7700K for the multi-core test, and a 43% increase for the single-core test. So while the laptop is a bit behind the desktop, it actually has slightly better hyper-threading performance comparatively, as we can see by the higher value of the MP ratio. Now for our second CPU test, I ran more of a real-world benchmark that utilizes multiple threads, transcoding a 2.5 gigabyte 4K video MP4 file using Handbrake, a popular open-source encoding app. And with Hardware Monitor and Task Manager open, we could see the live changes in temperature. 7700K finished the encode in 15 minutes and 14 seconds, reaching a max temperature of 86 degrees. The 7700HQ finished in 22 minutes and 6 seconds, reaching a max of 76 degrees. So there's a great illustration of what separates these two processors. The increased power draw and clock speed on the desktop make it finish faster and run hotter, while the laptop takes longer and runs cooler. Now, do keep in mind through all of this that we haven't overclocked or done any tinkering with these systems' performance presets, and we could probably squeeze out a bit more juice from both of them if we wanted to, but I don't. So, 
On to the GPU tests. I ran Time Spy and Firestrike Ultra in 3D Mark, the built-in benchmarks from Ashes of the Singularity and GTA 5, and got some actual gameplay benchmarks in Overwatch and The Witcher 3. In Ashes, GTA 5, and The Witcher 3, we saw around a 10 FPS boost on the desktop GTX 1070. Overwatch got an over 25 FPS boost on desktop running at ultra settings. The rest of the benchmarks were on high settings with VSync off. And in the 3D Mark tests, we got around a 600 point boost in score. There's not much to say about these, except it is interesting to see the real world performance difference resulting from the slightly toned down specs. All told, it's a decent but not a ridiculously large difference, and that's because of a number of factors. First, the GT73 has excellent cooling for a laptop. There's a reason it's called the Titan. It's even got a button to put the fans on full blast, which I will show you now. Although I did not use that button during the testing. Second, some of the biggest advances in processor technology in the past few years have been in power efficiency rather than pure performance. With those advances, gaming notebooks have been able to creep up to desktop level capability, shortening the gap between desktop and mobile processing power. Well, I think it's about time to wrap it up. So what's the takeaway from this video? Well, it's a similar conclusion to Jack's when he reviewed the older GT73. Gaming laptops can pretty much serve as desktop replacements nowadays, provided you're willing to shell out some extra cash for the portability factor. It used to be that even some of the mid to lower end desktop parts could outpace some high end laptops, but mobile technology has come a long way due to advances in power efficiency. So you can feel good buying a laptop as your main PC, but it's also good to know just what the difference is. I should mention as well that on Jack's video, people were commenting about how it's really expensive. It was like $4,600. That was like the top end, top end laptop. This one is $2,600, I believe, Canadian, which still expensive, but again, you're paying for the portability factor.